Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Citadel video. I'm sure you're all familiar with the principles of Moore's Law. Well, as some of you may be aware, Moore's Law in the least recent years has been becoming a somewhat of an endangered species, and many technologies are being researched with the same premise that they want to save Moore's Law. Now, the reason that they need to save it, of course, is because if Moore's Law eventually breaks down, our rate of advancement in computing is going to slow down quite significantly. Now, the reasons behind all of this are mostly due to the fundamental amount, uh, the fundamental limit, if you will, of how small, how tiny a transistor can actually become. Now, back in the days, especially if you're familiar with, say, the early Pentiums, um, up until Pentium 2, up to even Pentium 3, you'll be aware that there was massive improvements in clock speed. You were getting, you know, Pentium 1 at like 100 megahertz, then, you know, went all the way up, and then we had the Pentium 2s going up to like 450, 500 megahertz, or the Pentium 3s where it started out, actually, I think it was 450, and then, of course, they went to about 1, 1.1 gigahertz, and the Pentium 4, in theory, was supposed to go all the way up into the stratosphere, but it ended up not going that way because of, you guessed it, heat and power. And so... Moore basically predicted that computational power would continue to increase and increase in an exponential rate. But this has started to break down quite substantially. And IBM were the ones who actually started to create and lay the, the basic foundations, the groundwork for faster breed of light-based computing. So now you're getting researchers, and they're from um, the Colorado, Boulder, and MIT, and they're actually from the universities there, and they are now developing and trying to develop a new technology which will basically power and the, be the basis of future GP, uh, GPUs and CPUs. The basic premise is that they can actually translate and turn electrical signals into light, and the great news is they can actually be fabricated, in other words, created and manufactured using existing facilities and technology. Now, this is incredibly important because it drastically reduces the cost and the implementation of doing this. Now, Moore's Law was actually introduced way back by a chap known as Gordon, unsurprisingly, Moore. And he was actually a co-founder at Intel. And this was way back in the mid-1960s. Uh, uh, and the basic premise behind it was that every two years, the transistor count would double. And while this was happening, of course, you would actually see shrinking. So you may be aware that, for example, the Xbox 360's CPU would start at like 90 nm. Then it went down to 65. And now the new ones like might be... 25 nm or 28 or whatever and the purpose is of course to reduce heat power and everything else but the problem is there's issues when they're becoming so tiny and and compact you're starting to get situations where heat starts to build up and you also start getting equivalent of like well Imagine having tons and tons and tons of electrical wires close to one another what starts happening they start to produce a load of heat Transistors basically are switched on and off very quickly. That's why, well, binary works in ones and zeros. So the basic premise is that if these electrical wires were stripped away, in other words, there were no more, they were replaced with light, then you wouldn't really have to worry. In fact, you could imagine just how fast this could eventually go. I mean, think about the speed of light, just for example. And so Moore's Law, in theory could continue to move forward, um, assuming there wasn't a new technology that drastically pushed out, you know, understanding of computing technology. So, this new technology, known to its buddies and best friends as Photonics, uh, that's P-H-O-T-O-N-I-C-S, um, has a major advantage. It doesn't produce heat. There's no waste of electricity. It's, well, simple in that respect. 
Now, this has been around for a while, but previously, the idea behind it all was it would pretty much result in us, and by us, I mean, you know, companies like Intel, AMD, IBM, basically the the people who are trying to create and manufacture and produce the silicon to put in an ungodly amount of investment. In other words, they would have to pretty much forego whatever the hell they've got, which is not good because obviously that means they're going to have to either build new structures or amend the current buildings they've got or whatever. And of course, you've got issues such as the implementation, the design, the costs. It Most companies just simply couldn't afford to do it. It, it would have been prohibitively expensive. But the new team that's been working on this uh, is actually fully compatible with the SOI CMOS, CMOS, and that basically means that that was actually utilized to, funnily enough, on the cell processors. You may remember those, of course, they powered the PlayStation 3. Uh, this is also utilized in IBM's Power 7 as well, and that also means that pretty much all current facilities could be updated pretty easily to build these new photonic chips. So this is great because in theory we can have much higher bandwidth, great energy efficiency, much less heat, and that means the computing power is going to go up through the roof. So that's all great news in my personal opinion. Of course this is still very early days yet and they're still trying to work out the kinks, but if it all does work, then Moore's Law should continue forward and we won't really have so much of a big deal as what we do now because obviously silicon, even Intel have said, well, traditional silicon is going to basically reach the end of its shelf life by the end of this decade. It's starting to get very long in the tooth. We've pushed it as far as what we possibly can and that's why we're starting to switch towards more of a SIMD or multiprocessor type of design simply because it's not just a case anymore of just going and ramping up the clock speeds like there's no tomorrow. It just doesn't really work in practical terms. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been a bit of a short one for me, but nevertheless, um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.